So exactly a week ago on this channel, we broke down how the Ravens shut down Justin Herbert and the Chargers offense. One of my key takeaways was just how good Marlon Humphrey played in that game. He was fluid in zone defense, showing excellent awareness, and he matched up very well against Mike Williams, really limiting him all over the field. Now, if you were to tell me that in his very next game, that Jamar Chase would absolutely destroy him, I would have called BS. However, that's exactly what happened, and Chase ended his week seven game against the Ravens, collecting over 200 yards. In this video, we're going to discuss Chase's performance. We'll talk about his matchup against Humphrey and how he's already a star in the Bengals offense. Before we do that though, if you could do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So to start this video, I wanna talk about Chase's 82 yard touchdown that happened in the middle of third quarter. This came on a third and two. For context, the Ravens love using man coverage on third downs. In this game alone, they used man coverage on 80% of the Bagels' third down attempts. For the Ravens, cover one is their most common man coverage defense, with a single high safety and typically a robber or lurker linebacker over the middle of the defense to stop crossing routes, this allows them to blitz an additional defender. On this play, they actually just ran cover one plug where they only rushed four. At the top of your screen, we have Jamar Chase lining up directly against Marlon Humphrey. I want you to pay close attention to his route as his release and his hand fighting are what allowed him to get open. First, Chase takes a 1-2 step to square up his defender. He does this to create a two-way go, not showing his route early. Chase then accelerates to the outside. He wants Humphrey to turn towards the sideline. Chase then drops his hips, uses a well-timed strike on Humphrey's outstretched arm, and then he breaks back towards the middle of the field. He's open now, so he catches the ball, breaks multiple tackles, and then sprints all the way down the field for the long score. This play is an excellent example showing how good Chase is at using his hands to get open against man coverage. I saw this all throughout his film in this game, and it's something he did very well while in college too. In fact, on the plays when he didn't win on his release, these were mainly caused by poor hand placement. If Humphrey was able to jam him on his route and he couldn't fend it off, then Chase wouldn't be able to get open. Now, outside of that slant route that we just talked about, something I noticed about Chase was just how good he was on his other and breaking routes. For example, this dig at the end of the second quarter was really well run. Watch closely how Chase uses his inside arm to break the contact by Humphrey as he released inside. Humphrey went to jam, but Chase's quickness at the line of scrimmage combined with the uppercut from his left arm allowed him to rein free. Then as he ran down the field, his stem was straight as an arrow, not giving away his path, and he was able to use that to quickly break inside on his dig. There's no wasted movement, it's just a clean and simple dig route against press coverage that's run to perfection. Burrow's timing was impeccable. He hit Chase as soon as he completed his break, and then Chase used that momentary separation to gain 26 yards on the play. This throw and catch helped set up a field goal, which gave the Bengals a three point lead. Now, as I went through the film from this game, I wanted to see just how responsible Marlon Humphrey was for Chase's huge game, or if he was being unfairly criticized for what happened here. So after tracking every single play by hand, here were my main takeaways. First, there were 39 passing plays in this game. Out of those 39, Chase was on the field for 38. Another play was a spike, while there was one play where Chase was a blocker for a screen underneath. So out of the actual passing plays that Chase was a part of, I counted 36. Of those 36, Humphrey was lining up against Chase on 27 of those snaps. That's 75% of this game. Now, roughly two thirds of those were in man coverage while the other plays the Ravens were in zone. After going through all of Chase's routes from this game, I think Humphrey was directly responsible for five catches at 165 yards. Now, I know it's not entirely fair to blame him for all the yak that Chase created on 82 yard slant, but that's just the nature of allowing that catch in the first place. Regardless, and according to my tracking, Humphrey allowed five catches on seven targets, 165 yards, but he was able to collect an interception and a forced fumble in the latter half of the game. While I do blame Chase for the fumble and he was lucky it went out of bounds, the interception wasn't his fault. Let's look at that here. The Bengals were in empty while the Ravens sent an all-out blitz. This means that with five blockers and five receivers, that the Bengals had an extra rusher that it wasn't accounted for in their blocking. Meanwhile, the Ravens dropped into cover zero and played deep man coverage. While under duress, Burrow just decided to throw it up into the end zone hoping for the best. It's possible that with a perfectly placed pass by the right sideline that Chase could have brought it in. However, the ball is horribly underthrown. Humphrey saw this, so he turned and jumped to intercept the throw. Again, this wasn't Chase's fault, but he was technically targeted on this one. Outside of the man and zone coverage stats that I showed earlier, I wanted to see how Chase was doing on the season as compared to the other receivers around the NFL. Here's how he compares on a yard per route run basis. For reference, any receiver above the orange line shows that they are more efficient than the average. Chase is all the way up there on your right. Only Cooper Cup has more yards, but Chase has been more efficient on his routes. He's created 3.4 yards per route run as compared to Cooper Cup at 3.3 and Devontae Adams at 
clearly he's having a really good season. With all that out of the way, let's look at another example of one to chase his targets. This happened with a minute left in the first half. Once again, the Ravens are playing cover one. They're lining up with man coverage across the board with a single high safety deep in the middle of the defense. What I want you to take away from this play is Chase's connection and timing that he has with his quarterback. This was something that I saw all throughout their time together in college too. It's a trait that's translating very well so far in the NFL. On this play, Chase ran a back shoulder fade. What happens is that within the first eight yards of this route, Chase is going to accelerate outside and then look back towards his quarterback and adjust to the throw. If the pass is accurate and Chase can use his body control to adjust to the throw, this play is nearly impossible to stop. However, if the two are not on the same page, then this pass will go incomplete. As I just said a moment ago, these two share a special connection and that's very apparent here. At the 48 yard line, Chase takes an extended step to slow his momentum and then he starts to turn back towards the ball. The pass is already on the way and it's at shoulder height on the outside near the sideline. This is a perfect throw. All Chase has to do is extend outwards and then bring it in for the first down. That's what he does here and this is a quick 13 yard gain. For me, the main two qualities I must see from a top tier wide receiver is the ability to win against press as well as having the awareness to find space between zones. Chase has both of these abilities. The other thing that Chase does well is how he accelerates into his breaks. He does a great job of selling deep to break underneath as well as he does a fantastic job of creating a two-way go on all of his routes. He's a really difficult receiver to guard based on these qualities. Now, before we end this video, I want to briefly talk about the trends I saw from some of Chase's other snaps. No, he didn't win on every single play. There were plenty of fades and out routes where Humphrey did get the better. For example, in the first quarter, Humphrey did a great job of trailing and jamming Chase off the line of scrimmage. Chase couldn't separate on any of these plays. In my opinion, while Chase does have the talent to win on goes and fades, his best routes by far are his slants and digs. He started running more of those in the second quarter, and it was at that point when he really started destroying the Ravens' defense. Overall, Chase was incredible against the Ravens. Marlon Humphrey, while usually a really good player, just couldn't stop Chase's in-breaking routes. Outside of the back shoulder fade and one fade later in the game, he did play well on most of the fades I saw. However, when you're beat, you're beat, and that happened far too often this one. Now, as far as Chase is concerned, he's making a very strong case to be this season's Offensive Rookie of the Year. And not only that, if he keeps up his production, he also has a good chance at breaking the record for the most yards for a rookie wide receiver. Well, that's all I have for you in this one. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel, as well as if you want to support me directly, follow the link to my Patreon below. Thanks again, and you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.